What's going on, everybody? It's Rito here for your Overwatch. Today, we're going to be breaking down some play-by-play -play new Bonnie in overtime. We only had 60 seconds. We already had to use about a quarter of it just to get to the point. So we knew there wasn't really a way that we could back up to regroup as six. We'll just have to take the first casualty on the chin and dive in anyway. However, being able to wrap around in this high ground like this gave us a favorable fight against the soldier who in all reality should have expected us coming but didn't adjust to our flank his rhine was on the ground and widow was looking for picks on the main street the fact that we were down a man at the start of the fight didn't end up mattering that much now with mercer already down we turn to focus the zenyatta as well to guarantee that they have don't have any sustain and no supports to finish this fight we know we're going to have to push the car in overtime and pretty much the only way that you're going to be able to do that is by making plays we can't play too stiff and standard here otherwise likely eventually the defense should win with ultimates now Liam does take out the Mercy, but dies himself, so we're left to fend at the point. But ideally, if I could have had the shield ready to keep him alive, we would have been able to snowball this streets phase entirely. But even just killing the Mercy and sending her back to spawn is almost good enough, as already, Liam will be back into this fight. And that's the problem with defense. You can't fight so close to their spawn and die. Because the punishment for death is almost a minute of walk back time, whereas Genji's one swift strike away from being back in the fight. We use sound barrier as a reaction to the earth shatter, and we're sure to take out the final support remaining in the fight, Zenyatta, hiding off to the side. Hello there, Zen. Then we see a money opportunity to catch the rest of the team to finish them off into Graviton, and that should be them all done. Just a few stragglers from the first frags we got before this is coming from the left oh she reses all of them darn it we didn't hunt down the mercy fast enough and that just shows you how important it is to be controlling the map flow and knowing where that mercy is coming from now likely is with a lot of zarya charge and liam having his ult again we're able to clean up the frags yet again meaning that the mercy res did allow them to potentially have another fight but since they are still all group and clustered we were able to zone in around them and win it anyway now we're constantly keeping at least three players on the payload at all times but we're using those extra bodies to go hunt for information and try to find another pickoff we don't want to play too safe here because if we do there's always a chance that they're able to stabilize and we're not going to be able to react to their static defense as well because genji prefers to be in more skirmish battles the more targets that are in his way, the less effective he can be. Here again, they have no chance of even contesting the cart, but they're allowing us to take these poke shots, charging my ults as I dig for an opportunity to pounce the healers, which are the key to victory here. So the first chance at an opportunity that we get, we Graviton, both healers. Me and Liam both trade our lives for one apiece, but our res comes out and theirs doesn't, which actually is a perfect use of resurrection, and this would be called a temple res. Yes, we only res two, but it gets us back to full six just about guaranteeing that we'll snowball this fight without taking another casualty without any support ultimates when we use our ults they fall victim to them and really unless we make some horrific mistake we shouldn't die here without a lucio speed boost for them to retreat they're stuck in transition between a rock and a hard place we're barreling down the door pushing the cart in their teammates are back in spawn and they're just too slow and can't get away from genji when you play a slow team comp like that especially on defense the lucio Lucio's speed boost is absolutely crucial to move it around, or you have to play more disciplined than they did there. So looking back on this, this miracle run through Nimbani to finish the map in overtime was definitely set up in part by the defensive team's play. Yes, they got the Widow pick early, but having Widow on your team is a liability in its own right. She got her entry pick, but once we were in the muck storming the fight, she didn't really have a presence and we were able to clean up the kills otherwise. Then, in transition before their entire team was back, the defense was contacting with us, having a pretty much irrelevant poke war. There wasn't much reason at all to be poking from this distance, because unless you're able to contest the cart on defense, you can fall victim to be getting picked off. Liam trades his life for the Mercy there, which in effect opened up this entire streets phase to work. They pop some ults which weren't good enough, they didn't have enough healing to sustain their own players, their other healer goes down, and even though Mercy finally does get right back into the fight to resurrect after the big Graviton, we had them entirely surrounded and were easily able to crossfire and turn them into mincemeat. Then, the defense didn't take seriously how well they had to keep their players alive. When we come around the bend, pushing the cart all the while, and we use Grav to trade out both healers, you have to call this a mistake by the defense. 
They're not contesting the cart either way and it's moving at max speed. What they should be doing is backing up until they have six and then contact. Then me and Liam wouldn't be able to dive into their healers and trade out. They would punish our aggressiveness by having more numbers. But since their entire team isn't formed yet, we can abuse the Zarya shields and our own sustain long enough in order to kill the healers and send them back to spawn and get rezzed ourselves. Showing that each time we kept the momentum in this fight, proving that when you're on defense, you have to establish a back line. I'm gonna make another video about never trickling in, but it's worth saying here quickly. Grouping up doesn't mean go out to the choke with half your team and wait for the rest to come back to you. No, no, no. You have to go back to them in spawn so that there isn't this big window for the enemy team to pounce you when you don't have all your players back. You don't walk up into the fight and spam group up and expect your team to come with you eventually when they get out of spawn. You actually have to turn around and get back to them because if the enemy team is at full force, whether you have three or four of you or even five, it isn't worth having your crucial healers getting wrecked. Back up the fight until you have enough forces to protect them from that kind of stuff. Guys, I hope this play-by-play -play was useful to you. If you did enjoy, please hit the like button. It really does help us out. Check out our Discord server for finding teammates to group up with on every platform at every skill tier. We're streaming on Twitch every day. We're partnered and have a gang of sick emotes, so you're going to want to stop by and join the fun. If you haven't already, please do subscribe as we upload each and every day. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>